Welcome to Afternoon Tea with Primary Sources. My name is Kara Knight, and I'd like to welcome you to the second level of my time capsule duplex. So, um, I call this house a time capsule house because when we bought it, it had been relatively unchanged for the past 60 years. And it's been a lot of work, truly. I mean, look at this. This used to be a light switch. Very cool. Awesome primary source, but also kind of a fire hazard. So a lot of work to replace those. Well, one of the things that I've noticed in this house that was perhaps relevant to them is the fallout shelter symbol. We have it on the doors. And if you remember, you may have seen this symbol in a history textbook at some point, but this symbol represents um, where do you go in the event of a nuclear attack. And this was something that in the 1950s and 60s was really like an imminent threat, something that people thought about, that they practiced for, they were concerned about. Some people even built their own fallout shelters in their own properties because they were so concerned that um, a nuclear attack might occur and they wanted to protect their families, right? So we have these stickers that designate which fallout shelter we're assigned to go to. Um, and it probably dates back to probably around 1960. It reads, occupants of this residence are assigned to shelter at Dayton's Department Store at 7th Street and Cedar Street. So after seeing this label and wondering about all of the different criteria that might be needed to have a fallout shelter, I started asking around on um, neighborhood pages on Facebook and stuff, asking people, where have you seen these symbols before? Like, where in the neighborhood do they exist? And it sounds like there's a whole bunch of structures that were actually designated fallout shelters. So my plan is, I'm going to go out and I'm going to visit some of them and see if I can come to some conclusions about what kind of criteria was used. So I'm going to look for those similarities and see if I can't come to some conclusions about what made them a good candidate for a fallout shelter. Let's go. And here we are. We are at the Awakened Community Church in the West 7th neighborhood in St. Paul. And I found a fallout shelter sign. So you can see that this building was a designated fallout shelter. And I can tell you, I'm a little bit puzzled because this is definitely closer to my house than Dayton's in downtown. So I don't know why this wasn't our designated fallout shelter, but whatever. Something I'm noticing about the building is that it's, it's very large. It can fit a lot of people in it. Um, and it's a really sturdy stone structure. You know, it's a, it's a kind of monolith type building. Um, and you can tell just by kind of coming around the building that there are, that there is a basement level. So I'm wondering if maybe they're um, having a large basement for lots of people that they could come together um, and be safe. If that might be part of the criteria for a fallout shelter. I'm going to keep exploring and we'll see what else I find. We found another one. I'm at Bradshaw Funeral Home, and this building also still has its fallout shelter sign here on the back entrance off of the alley. Um, something I'm noticing about this building is that it's, again, it's a brick building this time instead of stone, but it's definitely like a very solid brick building. And it doesn't have a lot of windows in it. So I'm wondering if perhaps like having wherever the space that people are sheltering in may be. Perhaps one of the criteria is that it has to have very few windows. I'm not sure. I'm deducing based on the primary sources. Um, but I'm going to see if I can find one more. We're downtown St. Paul now at the Roy Wilkins Auditorium where we found yet another fallout shelter sign. As you can see, this is a big dang brick building. Like, really, really, 
really big. Really big. Um, so we're seeing that theme of brick again, that strong building structure. Again, I'm noticing, um, noticing not a ton of windows. Now, there are some windows up, up farther, but I'm thinking that if this is a basement scenario for the fallout shelter, that there's no windows, there's no um, uh, chance of like shrapnel or a, you know infiltration through the windows. So that seems to be something that might be important. I'm excited to look for some primary sources from um, the U.S. government to see if there's some consistency, if some of my guesses were correct, um, and I'll share that with you in the comments below. This has been Afternoon Tea with Primary Sources. I'm Kara Knight, and we'll see you next time. Bye!